Dear friends and family in Christ, may you know the love of Christ, his rich grace, mercy, and peace. May it dwell with you now and always. Amen. Today we have the beginning of Jesus' ministry. He begins his ministry not far from, lo- from home, along the Sea of Galilee. But today's gospel greets us with, a common, with an uncommon encounter with common men. Four common men, Peter and Andrew, James and John, they come into an encounter with Christ that changes their life forever. An encounter with Christ that changes who they are and what they do. Listen again to Christ's calling of the disciples. He saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Here they were, right in the middle of their work, right in the middle of their day-to-day lives, their normal lives there. And Jesus calls them. Now, we might imagine, well, of course, we would come if Jesus called, but at this point, not many people knew who Jesus was yet. Maybe they had heard of him. Maybe they hadn't. But what's more remarkable than anything else is their response. Their response to Jesus' calling. Immediately, they dropped everything and they followed him. Did you notice there was this this sense of urgency in in their following? They didn't stop and scratch their heads for a minute and say to themselves, well, you know, what are the pros and what are the cons? They didn't stop and say, well, I wonder what would happen if I go home and tell Mary, tell their wives, and ask what she thinks of this. They immediately dropped their net and followed Jesus. They didn't say, well, will someone better come along? But they immediately followed Jesus. Such conviction, such immediacy to their following. And that's the way the Holy Spirit works, isn't it? The Holy Spirit, when He enters into our hearts and into our lives, He puts that urgency into our hearts. The urgency to share the Gospel. The urgency to drop everything and to follow Him. The urgency to realize there's more than this world. But there's a hope. A hope to be with our Lord forever. That same call is the call that God issues to us. To drop everything to follow Him. To drop all these things that we hold on to so dearly. And to not sit back and say, well, wait a second here. Will someone better, something better come along? To not stop and say, well, wait a second here. I need to get my affairs in order first. And then, then I'll follow Jesus. But to immediately go. The disciples responded in a way that is so uncommon to us. They just dropped everything. They went. That didn't mean that their families didn't still need to eat. Their families certainly still needed to eat. That didn't mean that all of a sudden that, that they didn't have uh, well taxes to pay because, of course, Caesar was going to ask for his. But they dropped everything trusting in Jesus. They took that step of faith. Now let's rewind in history. 800 years before that. Go back to the land of Assyria. More specifically, we zero in on a town called Nineveh. Now most of you know the story of Jonah, but I don't know, maybe you know how, uh, all about the Assyrians too, and you know that they were a great ruling power at this time. They were those who controlled the land. They were those who no one wanted to mess with. In fact, if you were to come to the great city of Nineveh, they had skulls of their former enemies along the gates, along the walls to challenge anybody who came after them. This is what happened to our last enemies. Are you sure you want to challenge us? And here we have Jonah. By the way, his name means dove. Although he didn't come with a sign of peace, did he? He came with a message. A message for those people. Perhaps the shortest sermon recorded in the Bible. He comes to them and he says, if you do not repent, you'll be destroyed. Notice the response of the people. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them to the least of them. An uncommon, unexpected response. Think about Jonah, the previous chapters of Jonah. He did not expect the people to respond this way. He expected the people to kill him, to put him to death, but so he thought, better to run for it. But God, God didn't let him go, did he? He pursued him with a vengeance. And he sent Jonah 
He sent Jonah to bring that message of repentance. And in the shortest sermon that we have recorded in the Bible, he changed 120,000 people's hearts. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe I need to shorten up my sermons a little bit, and that would be, but look at the response of the people. 120,000 people, from the greatest, the king of Assyria, to the least. And here, they all repented, putting on sackcloth, coming to the Lord. The Spirit works, doesn't He? He works in ways that we can hardly imagine and hardly fathom. And yet, here we sit. Here we sit wondering when the next miracle will come along. We hear stories of Mark chapter 1 and Jonah chapter 3 of these uncommon, extraordinary responses, miraculous responses. And we're wondering, where are those responses today? Where are those responses among us? Where are the heroes of the faith who can, who can preach a sermon that will bring 120,000 people to Christ? Billy Graham is pretty effective, but he's not 120,000. And when you think about it, maybe at times we wonder, where are those miracles? Where are those uncommon responses? Maybe at times we even grow weary wondering when they will be, when the next hero will come along. Maybe we grow weary with God's calling for us, not expecting those same types of responses. What about you? I'm going to ask you a direct question. And I don't want you to answer aloud, although I do want you to think about this seriously. But when is the last time you took God's calling seriously? His call for you to share the gospel. When is the last time you intentionally and urgently shared the gospel message? Think about that for just a minute. We believe that the heart of God is, is to seek and to save the lost to redeem those who are dying and dead in their sins. We have heard the salvation message, the forgiveness of our sins. But when is the last time you urgently went out and intentionally shared your faith? Now, I don't want you to to say, well, so-and-so, they haven't done it either. I don't want you to say, well, well, maybe we're waiting for the right ministry to come along. Because notice in Scripture, Jesus doesn't tell them, well, this is the ministry plan and here we're going to go. He just says to go. So put aside the excuses for just one day. And when is the last time? Now, I don't know what your answer is. Maybe some of you are saying, well, that was just two days ago. But I suspect, as is true for many Christians, Maybe it's a little longer than two days ago. Maybe it's been a little longer since we've urgently shared our faith with the urgency that Jesus is coming again. I don't know. But it seems like a lot of us in this world today have grown content to just sit back, to just hear the gospel, which is an important thing. Don't get me wrong. We do need to hear the gospel But Jesus didn't just want the disciples to hear the gospel. He wanted them to go and tell. He didn't just want Jonah to hear this message. Those folks need to repent. He wanted to go and have him preach, even even if it meant that they were going to kill him. He wanted the disciples to give up all these things that were so earthly-minded and to trust in him. And God calls us the same way, to give up the earthly-minded things, these things that we worry so much about, whether or not we'll pay our bills, whether or not we'll have enough to eat, whether or not we'll have a house over our heads. We worry about those things so much that we fail to see this greater hope and promise that comes in sharing the gospel, the greater need people have to hear that Jesus is love. That Jesus came into this world and in an uncommon way redeemed his people. I love how Paul puts it in Romans chapter 5 because he does, does this perfectly. He shows us how uncommon it was for Jesus to do what he did. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his own love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
Since therefore we have now been justified by His blood, much more shall we be saved by Him from the wrath of God. For if while we were yet enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more now that we will be reconciled shall we be saved by His life. Jesus didn't say, well, let me weigh the pros and cons of dying on the cross. Let me weigh the pros and cons of how faithful these people are going to be. Instead, He said, in an uncommon way, I love these people so much, I'm going to give my life for them. I love you all so much, I'm going to give my life for you. And I forgive you of all of your sins. I forgive you of your lackadaisical attitudes towards those who are lost. I forgive you, towards the a- forgive you for your apathy towards the world. I forgive you for all those sins, even those ones that you haven't confessed. In an uncommon way, God showed us His love by giving His life for us. He has called us to be uncommon in this world full of common people. To be uncommon so that people may encounter Christ in this world today. And it's a matter of stepping out in faith. It is. It's a matter of stepping out in trust in the Lord. It's a matter of stop making excuses, filing it away and saying, yes, I really should share my faith, but, well, we'll get to that next Tuesday. It's a matter of trusting in God and stepping out. Because the people in our world, they need to encounter Jesus Christ. The people in our world, they need to encounter the love of God. What about the El Centro community? We look around and we think, well, so many people, they must already know Jesus. But here we sit with such an opportunity to share our faith, such an opportunity to proclaim the good news, to go, to follow Jesus, to not be comfortable with just those who are already in the faith, part of the family, but to go and extend the family, extend the family to those who speak different languages, extend the family whose skin are not lily white like ours, to extend the family to those who smell a little different than we are, who slept in a little different place than we did last night, to go and extend the family to those the world have forgotten. That's what's uncommon about our faith. That's the uncommon love of God and the uncommon response He calls us to so that all may encounter Jesus. So go. When Jesus calls, go. Go and make disciples of all nations. Go and be fishers of men. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gift of your word, for the gift of our faith and the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you for the sure promise that we hold on to this day and each and every day. We pray that you would forgive us for those times when we have been content to receive your gifts so freely, so richly, but unwilling to share them. Forgive us for those times when we have forgotten those who, well, it's easier to forget. Forgive us for those times when we have not gone with passion or urgency to share your love. Reassure us that while we are yet sinners, you have died for us. You have paid the price for every one of our sins. And you have redeemed us that one day we might be with you forever. May this be not only the hope that we hold on to, that lives within our hearts, but may this be the hope that fills our lives, so that you may erupt from us and that people may know the power of salvation, may see your Spirit at work in us. Lord, we pray that you would use us as your people to share your gospel to the very ends of the earth. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and our Lord. Amen.